Jonathan McIntosh tweeted about this guy's video, The People vs. Clark Kent. This video is a real riot. It only takes about a minute of listening to this video to get the idea why McIntosh would direct those that were still able to follow him on Twitter to this video. Man of Steel is sort of unintentionally this brilliant criticism of the modern state of America. I mean, Superman is basically the avatar of America, right? Truth, justice, and the American way, all that. He grew up in Kansas. He's as American as apple pie. It's right there in the inherent conceit. The American way. Do things the American way. Maybe this is what people mean when they're saying that Superman in Man of Steel is acting out of character. They're saying he's not properly American. He's not doing things the American way. He just marches around the globe exercising extrajudicial powers in pursuit of a single terrorist cell while ignoring virtually all collateral damage. Also, he basically skips diplomacy entirely. I'm surprised he didn't say, I don't negotiate with terrorists before he punched Zod ineffectively for the hundredth time. The YouTube channel, How It Should Have Ended, has already looked into the script of Man of Steel and written out the conflict with Zod. With this gone, Superman wouldn't have to fight Zod and his subordinates, who are always equals in physical strength and supernatural ability. That is why it seems like Superman can punch Zod a dozen times without much of an effect. Or watch this world suffer the consequences. <gasps> he sounds serious, Clark. Yeah, he does. If only there were someone I could turn to for guidance about this situation. You mean like a random priest? No, not a random priest. Someone who would actually know something about Zod specifically. Someone who actually knew him. Oh wait, my space dad! Oh yeah, Zod is a complete monster. You, you have to stop him. He will kill every last thing on Earth. Well, can you show me how? I have less than 24 hours to agree. That's plenty of time. Here's what you need to do. How much time is left on the clock? I grow tired of waiting. 23 and a half hours, sir! The clock is right there! Curses! I knew giving him an entire day was far too generous. General! Sensors detect the small ship approaching! What kind of ship? It appears to be Jarrell's baby shuttle! And Kal-El is with it! Ha! Kal-El already surrenders and he's bringing the Codex with him. This may be easier than I thought. Wait! Why would he bring the Codex with him? He should have no idea what we're looking for! Uh, Phantom Drive! It's a trap! Wow. So you actually saved all of them. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what I do. I save the day. Plus, villains are stupid, remember? Nice. So then what'd you do? Well, I did what everyone was expecting. I made out with Lois for a little bit, flew out into space, and smiled for the camera. Sweet. Can you imagine if you had to fight those guys on land? Oh my gosh, thousands of people might have died! Plus billions of dollars in property damages. I can't pay that kind of debt on a daily planet salary. I mean, you could, because you're- Because I'm Batman. I was gonna say rich. I am also rich. I'm Rich Batman! Oh my gosh. You know, some might think that's getting a little annoying. Oh, well, what are you gonna do about it? Snap my neck. I could if I wanted to. <laughs> Superman had to stop Zod because Zod had weapons of mass destruction and sent scary videos to the media. You're all at risk, you're all going to die, and only Superman in the American way can save you. He had to. It's all okay. Zod didn't just have a weapon of mass destruction. He had the weapon of mass destruction. He was going to terraform the planet Earth and turn it into Krypton. In effect, killing every human on the planet. This would be a little different than North Korea having a few nukes that it may or may not be able to aim at the United States or one of its allies. So Zod was a human problem, and not a problem for the American people alone. If you didn't miss it, you would see that Zod's message was being broadcast all over the world. It'd probably be more fair to say that Man of Steel is anti-American in that its fetishism of American authority demonstrates a frightening recklessness towards civilians and other nations. Now, 
Jingoism is nothing new, and neither is the whole America Saves the World storyline. But it's changed. It, it used to just be kind of arrogant, like everyone's sitting around waiting for America to fix whatever problem the world has gotten into. It's from the Americans. They want to organize a counter-offensive. It's about bloody time. And then America would come up with some nifty solution that would bring everyone together. Now it's different. President Bill Pullman felt bad about nuking an empty city that was on the verge of being destroyed by aliens. I mean, sure, the city looked empty, but who knows how many people are trapped by circumstance. Old people who can't or won't leave their homes, poor people with no means of evacuating, search and rescue teams looking for stragglers. We don't even know them. We don't even know if they exist. But may our children forgive us. This guy doesn't know anything about the greater good. It is fine and dandy to think about the ripple effect of time and think what a few generations down the line might think of your actions. But when all life on the planet is the issue, or in World War II where America dropped a bomb on Japan, some people are going to die because it would be worse off if they did not. In the case of the movie Independence Day, do you really think we had the time to get everyone out of their apartment buildings before we tried to blast these massive alien ships that have systematically been annihilating everything they came across. By this time in the film, they just took out New York and the White House. Sure, it makes you feel better. Think of the old and the poor when these fictitious cities are destroyed by these larger than life bad guys that have come from outer space. Then I guess you're free to do so. And then there's Superman. The damage to Metropo New York, including fallout damage to the global economy, is estimated at two trillion dollars, with close to 1.5 million casualties. A trillion dollars is almost impossible to comprehend. One trillion dollars is enough money to provide clean water, basic education, functional roads, high-speed internet, basic health care, and apprentice training in a trade to basically everyone on the planet. Not one of those things, all of those things. Like I said, it's almost impossible to comprehend, but it's always worth the cost. If you don't believe that, you just don't realize how powerful Zod really is. That's the problem. You're off message. Superman is the only answer to Zod, and it's always worth the cost. And after Zod is dead, well, don't worry. I'm sure they'll think of something for the sequel, some reason to keep Superman around, and if that starts to fall flat, they can just reboot the whole thing. Put on a new coat of paint and cut out all the annoying parts where the heroes show remorse or doubt the value of their own existence, or make us suspect that they might just be part of the problem to begin with. Because don't worry, it's all okay. It's always worth the cost. If you are not suffering from the acute depression, you would have to admit that saving lives, something that Superman has always been about, would be of utmost importance, and you would favor in saving the most lives. Superman's tightly held belief is not to take a life. But even this is violated when he realizes that Zod's freedom to kill indiscriminately does not serve the better good. He knew Zod was too dangerous to be let go and there was no way to hold him. Is it worth the cost of Superman's soul to be the executioner? Is it always worth the cost? Let's ask the Ebola patient. They are probably as good as dead anyway. Is it really worth the cost to save them? Funny that this guy wants to stop the bombing of killer aliens because of collateral damage. The writers aren't fools. They have written a do or die situation, only you're not going to swallow it. But I ask you, if you do not cross the point of no return, you'll be signing a death certificate of every soul on the planet Earth. If you do not make the hard choices in both Man of Steel and Independence Day, there'll be no one alive to second guess your decisions.